Let's tell the truth. Many of us really don't like change to refocus, rebuild, reinvent ourselves, to go down those lanes, those paths that do lead to change. They find us terrified sometimes. But today's guest is Linda Coleman Willis, and she's had to take these steps herself in her own professional life. She's here to help us navigate these waters. I'll be back in a moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode right here. Her business, her voice, her conversation. I told you earlier that I really was just over the moon to speak with some women who continue to inspire me, motivate me. And some of these women don't even know the impact that they've made on my life for years. But that's what it's like when you are a woman who's always on the move, when you are a woman who refuses to say no. So I am grateful to have Linda Coleman Willis with me today. Mm. Linda is an award-winning speaker, best-selling author, and let me tell you, she is a business consultant. And when before we said hit record, she was on a roll about how the pandemic had really changed the territory and the the tapestry of women, how we do business. So we want to pick that up. Welcome, Linda. I am so grateful that you are here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I am just pleased to share this time with you, Margot. Well, you're I'm an outstanding you. woman too now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, you're going to make me cry. Oh, but it's yeah. all about you right now. It's all about you. <laughs> You are a woman who is all about reinventing herself, refocusing, and actually redefining, rebranding yourself. So many of us struggle with that, and we don't know how to do such a thing when we have to do it. So will you just kind of take us on a journey? How does a woman actually reinvent herself? How did you come through this pandemic thing? You know, I think... And this pandemic hit when I considered myself at the top of a coaching uh, and I was doing workshops and and taking people through the writing process because total, I have written eight books. So people were calling me and I said, okay, this is an opportunity to share another area that I've gained some expertise in. That pandemic hit. And I'm not a techie. I had a virtual assistant that would do all my posting and all of that. And I was always on my stage or someone else's stage or in front of people or marketing. So here I am now stuck in the rooms. And basically, I'm still here, home-based business. And so I had to refocus my energies because I'm a very high energy person and I am a, a spiritual person. So I knew that maybe there was a reason that we all had to slow down. I'm not sure. But the greatest thing is that there was opportunity to keep reaching out to people. And of course, that was Zoom is one or hop in or some of the other. I had a women's group that I met with once a month, uh, women and once a month that we met. And all of a sudden we were all on Zoom. So we didn't lose contact, but it wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. You know, it just wasn't the same. We were online. But I, I decided that I was going to create ways to continue to reach out to people, to engage people. And so I started doing webinars. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like I had no uh, my virtual assistant. Uh, her husband retired. She retired in the middle of the pandemic. So all of a sudden I had everything. <laughs> <laughs> and and I had to do a lot of stuff. I had to learn some stuff. And I could, I had a few people I could call on and say, can you do this or can you do that? But basically, when, you, when you're when you faced with a challenge, you have to make a decision. Are you going to go down? Or are you going to find a way to get around it? Or are you going to create something new that can help you pull, not only pull you out of it, but pull other people out of it? And that was the, the refocus for me. And, and you're right. I've had to re- refocus a lot of times because you know what happened? Life. Life happens. Life happens. And sometimes it exists. You're either going to lie here and moan and groan and feel sorry for yourself, or you're going to get up and take a look at what talent you have, what value you can bring, get outside of yourself. I I spoke to a woman yesterday and I said, we get outside of ourselves and and this is my problem, but just imagine how many more people are having the same problem out there. And maybe you've found, found a solution or at least you want to encourage them to keep stepping forward, to keep moving, to not give up. So refocus, 
and find out what that refocus looks like for you. It may be different than what Linda Coleman Willis had or what Margo had, but they're refocused on something that's really important to you that you feel that can help someone else. And then one, once you once you refocus, you can go into the rebuilding process. You can start to, to create, and you'll be surprised at what kinds of things, talents you may have that you never even thought about as talent. Because someone out there is probably in a worse condition than you. And I'm encouraging a lady now to write her story. Uh, um, And she's ashamed of her story because of the the kinds of things that happened to her in her childhood. And I looked at her and I said, just imagine. Don't think about you. Just imagine how many people refocus because she has a story to tell. And she has survived it. She lived through it. She's a wonderful, great woman. And there are other people that are currently in the situation she was in or have been in some situation that they, it's, they are hiding it in the closet. And because they are hiding it in the closet, it's not giving them permission to grow and expand and refocus and, and do all the wonderful things that they could do, not only for themselves, for other people. So I, I just say... It's I, you know, it's it's a God thing <laughs> because I, I often I have to give him credit. And 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 through this pandemic, I just thought, this is it. Mm-hmm. But no, doors kept opening, people kept calling. Uh, would you would you be a speaker on my program? Or yeah, I have a, a women's group and and we're going to be um, you know, every Sunday afternoon for a few, we, we have a certain topic and I like, and I know this is your topic. Will you come and speak to my group? So it, it didn't, it didn't fly away. It didn't fly away, but, but I was open to receiving. Open. You have to be open to receiving because what we go, we'll go in the, in the, in the room, close the door and get the old poor me, you know, no, you have to be open to receiving because th- th- a lot of people were in a really, really bad, bad place. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and it was my husband and I suffered a fire and we were out of our home for a year and a half, you know, living out of out of a, first in a hotel and then uh, in in a rented house that we had to live in while they put our house back together. So there were there are lots of challenges that you're going to be faced. But if you can find that one thing that gives you strength, that helps you want to keep moving, that says, hey, this is not the end. This may be a new beginning, but it is definitely not the end. And that's 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 always been my attitude mm-hmm. is that there is something else better. There's something God wants me to do. Yes, this is a challenge, but I can grow through it. You can grow through it. And a lot of people have, I've heard people say, I'm not going back to that job. I can do more. They've discovered themselves. A lot of people discovered themselves in in the middle of this pandemic. And and so I say refocus and then start rebuilding and then reach out and get the support that you need and then support other people. Yes. Yeah. And don't be afraid to tell your story. There's someone else out there heard that so many times. Mm-hmm. Tell your story. Mm-hmm. Because first and foremost, before they want your book, before they want your product, they want to know, who are you? Yes. Can I even relate to this person? Mm-hmm. And more times, yes than never, you have something in common. That's right. And it's a magical, magical story. Looking at you, listening to you, who would have thought you have had to climb over so much just in these last three years out of yes. fire that took you out of your home, mm-hmm. your comfort zone, your place of peace and respite mm-hmm. for over a year. Mm-hmm. And we won't talk about the loss because I had a, a, my home based business. So <laughs> my my yeah, it's so so a, a tremendous loss. But like I said, it cleared a path. And I'm like, okay, this is what I I'm dealt, you know, again, refocus, <laughs> refocusing. Because if we sit back and oh, poor me, or we stay, and, and I know a lot of times we're there in the beginning, but don't stay there. Yeah. 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 Just know that there there is something better. There may be something better, but certainly you don't have to sit there and stew in that. Yes. You like can that's refocus. The end. Like that's yes. the end. It can be the beginning of something wonderful. Linda, do you find that so many people, it's just fear? 
and mm-hmm. the fear of failure, the fear of, oh, I shouldn't have started anyway. This was a mistake. Oh, the fear of what my family's going to say, the fear of what the world is going to say. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that's a major obstacle for many of us? So that's why we get out the violin. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> Poor me. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what say you to all of that? Because it's fear yeah. is huge. Fear, fear is real, too. And I, I talked to a young lady, the same young lady about procrastination. And I told her procrastination is fear of something. You may not know exactly what that fear is, but it's fear of something. If you're procrastinating, you, you have the ability, you want to do it. There's opportunity for you to do it, but you're procrastinating, meaning I'm, I'm holding back. I'm not doing it. Yeah. It's fear of something. So the first focus to try to be, what get, what am I afraid of? Just get a pencil and paper and write down, what am I afraid of? 99% of those things will never happen, but they're keeping, they're holding you back. They haven't happened and they're holding you back. And now in your mind, the fear of them happening is holding you back and you're not taking that first step. Yeah. And there's always, 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 I have found, and I tell my daughters this, uh, the reason you do get out there and you do show your face and you do make effort, that every step of the way in my life, there's always been someone there that will step up and help you. Oh my. Yeah, there, there are a lot of people want to put their foot on your neck, yeah, but there's yeah. always someone, and I can just name them, Margot, that have said, they see you trying, they see your character, they see that you're you're serious about what it is you're trying to do. And there's always been someone that would step up and give me some help, give me some support. So when, when, you're, when you're doing it and you're doing it for all the right reasons and you've made up your mind that yes, I, I'm afraid of failure, maybe it's not failure, I'm afraid that you know, my friends, I might lose, whatever you, whatever it is, procrastination, discover that fear behind it. And start dealing with that fear because fear can can um, immobilize us. Yes. Yeah, it keeps us yes. stuck. Yeah, I'm afraid. It blocks, it blocks that download of the solution or the eyesight for the opportunities that really are there. That's and right. You know what? I don't want to cut you off, but I really I've heard you say a couple of times you are spiritual. Both of us, we're Christian. Mm-hmm. And when you said there was always someone there always. to be of assistance, to step up and help you, mm-hmm. I always believe that that is just the Lord saying, mm-hmm. keep moving. Mm-hmm. Keep moving. I got you. Mm-hmm. Keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Because because when um when I when people talk to me and and especially when I was doing the radio show, the motivational power hour, uh, your hour of empowerment, we we would be, I would have guests. I had different guests. I had Les Brown, I had Yellow Ben Zan, I had uh the chicken soup guys, I had all kinds of people. And 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 then you would have people call in and they would say, but that's them, but you know, and I would say, I'm not them. These are people that I reached out to. Les Brown was, was wow. First, he, he was my first guest on the radio show. And when I joined National Speakers Association, he said, go over there. And, and once you join them, you can speak on any stage in this country. And he did not lead me wrong. I became president the year that I became president of the organization. He said, when you become president, I'm coming to speak there. Because he was huge at the time. And... He did. He did. He did. You know, so what I'm saying is if when you show when you step out there, when you show the effort, yes, it, you, you may still have some fear, but now you're facing it and you're taking some action steps. And like I said, I'm a Christian, so I pray a lot. And when I talk to people, I always tell them there's God, <laughs> you know, because I'm just this little girl from Texas that has been able to have a great career in speaking and training and coaching and and even before that in real estate. I'm, I'm, I'm my background, my background is business and um, sales. And part of what I do with people who I'm coaching to write their books is put together a sales and marketing plan. I was on the phone with a young lady last night and I wrote that book, A Complete Guide to Selling Books, because a lot of the books I found was on marketing, was centered around marketing. Mm-hmm. marketing to me is that yellow light blinking sales is that green light <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's go yes 
Let, let people know it's out there. That's yes. the yellow light. Marketing is the yellow light. But if you just consistently sit, up, sit at a, a, a stop where you have red, green, yellow, and the yellow light is just blinking and you're just sitting there. No, the green light is gold. The green light, that's when you go. And so that's the way it is. That's the way it should be in your business, in your life, in whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Find that what you consider your green light, yeah. your green light, your go light. If there's a time where it's time out for, you know, because we will use that as an excuse for not doing. And, and I try to be the kind of, person in people's lives that I found in my life. I don't know if you ever remember when Les used to, Barbara Lindsay used to bring Les to Los Angeles and he would do the speak for a living. I hadn't thought about being a speaker, speak for a living training. And he would, he took us through the training and then he said, now get out there. I'm going, oh, oh, get out there, (laughs) you know, get out there. And, you know, years later, you know, I, so I, I try to do the same for people that other people have done for me in my life because, and especially, you know, cause I have for years, I've been doing Christian education training at my church. So I, 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 we, there's a, there's a group of us and we are teacher training and development. So wow. teachers that come into the city of refuge has to be trained, not, you know, not to teach per se, but it's a Christian. So we have a course that we take them through and it's called teacher training and development. And I've done that for years. And that's part of my give back. Yeah. That's part of my give back. Cause I know that I've been blessed along these, these ways. I hear you. Uh, As everyone can hear, you are a woman of many talents, but when it gets, when the rubber meets the road, you know so much. I mean, it's no wonder you have what eight books that are yeah. out on mm-hmm. the market. Mm-hmm. It's uh, no... four, three, three, let's see, four four of them are anthologies, and anthologies is books written with other people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and then I have four that I wrote. That's a lot of work <laughs> out there, evergreen mm-hmm. for yourself. You mm-hmm. have the radio show. Mm-hmm. All the major stages know you. Mm -hmm. So you have evergreen here and evergreen there and evergreen (laughs) everywhere. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, and I'm looking at the time, uh, at the end of the day, what's your greatest greatest accomplishment as far as making an impact to with women in their lives, motivating them, inspiring them? What what comes to mind? Loving Yourself First, A Woman's Guide to Personal Power. This was my first book. I have three uh, publishers right now saying, bring it out again. You can make some changes. You can update it. But this is needed today. It is. And and this book went, this got went everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. This was my first book. Les Brown wrote the foreword. Wow. (laughs) Wow. And Dr. Julia Hare wrote the preface, you oh know, Dr. Goodness. Julia Hare. Yes, they, yes. I mean, I, I was, uh, I don't know if you knew um, African-American women on tour empowerment conference was out at that time. That and took San me Diego? across the country. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. Yes. 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 If you know Lisa, then you probably know uh, Maria Dowd, I believe her name was. I, I saw her speak a long, 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 yes. long time ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. she took us uh, across California, but this book t- took me across the country. Oh. And and then the, um, the Chicken Soup book, Chicken Soup for the African-American woman's soul and the African-American soul took me across the world. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, and in and, and, and that, and that book, I'm one of many stories, wow. yes, but yes. I had a story called over the wall. And Uh-oh. again, it was, uh, when I was 23 years old and they lowered the height requirement for the sheriff department to five, three, I'm five, three, they never had five, three, and they didn't lower it for women. They were trying to get Latino and Asian men. I showed up. They had to get me through. And this is what they were saying. She'll never make it. She'll never make it. I had to push a police car. I had to um, walk a balance beam. I had to pull a 185 or 95 pound mannequin so far. And I did all that. But then the last challenge was a six foot solid concrete wall. And they said, she'll never get over it. 
And I'm back there trembling now because I'm like, how am I going to get over that wall? I'm five, three. And I saw men, they would run and they would jump up and they could get their arms on and then try to pull themselves up. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Mm -hmm. I remember it's I used to run track in in, in um, school, yeah. middle school and high school. And I remember something a coach told me. He said, a lady's strength is in her arms, in her arms, not in her legs, but you can run. And if you use your arms as you run, it gives you speed. I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to run up that wall. And I did. I ran up the wall. So when I when I picked up the speed, I ran up the wall to the point where by the time I was close to the top, I didn't have to try to pull the weight of my body. All I had to do was cross a leg over the wall and go down on the other side. And all the men out there applauded, except for the man who just had been telling everybody, don't worry, she'll yeah. never make it. <laughs> she'll never make it. So and and that that story is in Chicken Soup for the African American Woman Soul and the African American Soul. I got a call from Africa to come and speak. He said, "Oh, I read your story, and oh, it is so inspiring. You don't know who you're going to inspire. Yes. All the people that inspired me, lots of people inspired me. So, uh, and, and I know we are running out of time, but tribulation to triumph is." I interviewed 30 breast cancer survivors oh my goodness. and wrote their stories, changed my life. And that was for women of color, the tribulation to triumph, breast cancer survivors story of faith, courage, and healing. Oh my and goodness. it is a powerful, powerful book. So there, there are all kinds of ways to get to be an author. But um, I just encourage people to follow their dreams. Look at the, uh, there, there are going to be challenges. You're going to be challenged, but don't let fear stop you. Mm -hmm. And don't and procrastination is a killer of a lot of dreams. But it's if you know it's fear of something, if you get and people are like, I don't know, it's just I I, I do this, do it, and I just can't get a piece of paper and write down what it is that you're afraid of. Yeah. And, and I would pray on it. I'd, get, I'd turn yeah. that over to God first of all, because yes. you know, He can work miracles in your life. Yes. Miracles you can't even imagine. He has worked miracles place grace mm -hmm. and peace mm -hmm. throughout your life. You mm -hmm. are a national treasure. Thank it's, you. I, I tell you, from the very first time I heard you speak, you inspired <laughs> me. And this is, I can barely sit in my seat just listening to you. <laughs> oh, I so you. <laughs> appreciate you, your body of work. And before we close out, please let everyone know where they can go so that they can purchase your books so that they can ask you to speak on their stage so that they can get in contact with you, maybe even work one-on-one, -on -one. whatever they need. I know that you have what a person is seeking only for the asking. Right. How do oh, they find you? Well, I would say my uh, website is businessdevelopmentforsuccess.com. If you're interested in writing, it's you just do the backward stash writing. It takes you straight to um, that particular area of my website. So the business, the business is www.businessdevelopmentforsuccess.com. And you can, uh, Linda Speaks 1113 at gmail.com. And the thing is that um, Google, <laughs> sometimes I'm surprised with what comes up. I was like, wow, Google keeps, uh, you know, all kinds of information on you and you'll, you see, but I'm, I'm, um, I'm here. Yes. Yeah. Very I'm here. Much so. mm -hmm. Gosh, mm -hmm. I wish that we had more time. I really, really do. I, once again, I, here I am fangirling all over again. Thank you for your time. Oh, okay. I Thank do have a, I do have a two day workshop that I do for, for writers if they want okay. to. Yeah. And it's May, May 25th is the Black Writers on Tour. I'll be there. I'm doing a workshop there called How to Write a Book. But I have a, my own two-day workshop that I do. It's called From Concept to Completion, From Idea Stage to Finished Product. I take you from your idea to finish, and I do not let you procrastinate. <laughs> yeah. Good. So- Okay. And so then they can sign up once they go over to your website, or do you have a particular date for the workshop? I don't, I don't, the, the May 25th, I'll be at Black Writers on Tour. Mm -hmm. My workshop is from 1 p.m. 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. I will have a booth there. 
Okay. Uh, because I'm part of the, the uh, uh, author's panel and the workshop, there'll be someone else sitting at my booth, but he'll have fly flyers for the workshop. But I, I'll be there all day. So at some point in time, you will, there is a, I will be at the booth or I will be doing my workshop or part of the author's panel where people get to ask us questions and you're going to be there. I'll be there. Also. And I'm just up then to find out what time your workshop is going to be. So I can, I'm, I was hoping it wasn't the same time and it's not. It's not. <laughs> so you will look out and I will be sitting <laughs> as you speak also. Okay. So I'll make sure that I get this out and everybody, Black Writers on Tour is taking place uh, this month in, in March and usually don't timestamp stuff, but it's uh, March the 25th. It mm -hmm. is free to Carson enter. Community Center. Yes, in Carson, mm -hmm. California. So mm -hmm. if you're in Southern California, you need to be there. You Dr. Rosie there. Milligan really makes this a wonderful, wonderful event. Oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. live mm -hmm. and you'll want to be there. So mm -hmm. You look for Doc. Uh, I was going to say Dr. Linda Coleman. Well, I feel as though you may as well have <laughs> I, your doctor. I hope they come out because this will be the first live one. We can't. We had it all set up March two years ago and had to cancel it. Yes, but this is the first live one, so it should be really good. Wow. Dr. Claude uh, Anderson is going to be yes. one of the speakers, so it, it it'll be good. We'll all be there. So wonderful. come on out. Yes. Yeah. The lineup. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we had better dash. I could okay. have this lady on. We have to <laughs> have this conversation again. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you, audience. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your, thank you for your time. Do reach out to Linda Coleman Willis. It will be worth your time. Once again, I'm Margo Levette, her business, her voice, her conversation. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation. Remember, our parent company, Go Beyond the Interview. You ready to imagine, build, and launch your own podcast? Let's do it. How about podcast guesting? Placement, one sheet, everything. We can help you with that also. Visit us, gobeyondtheinterview.com. Remember, Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation will be back in two weeks. In the meantime, take care. We'll see you next time.